the gospel is Christ in me, Christ in me. Mystery of the gospel is Christ in me, Christ in me. The rushing mighty wind has begun. Amen. That's the title of my message this morning. The rushing mighty wind. First verse for today. Acts chapter 2 verse number 2. It says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Could you please repeat after me? Rushing mighty wind. Amen. The rushing mighty wind. What is it talking about? This rushing mighty wind. You and I know it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. Holy Spirit came on the people and it sat on them like fire. Why it is called rushing mighty wind. The third person in the Trinity, the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit has another name, another representation. It is called as mighty wind. It is called as many waters. Why the sound of rushing mighty wind? Let's understand that. Whenever we hear God's word, God's voice throughout the Bible, it always talks about something like roar of waters, sound of a wind, sound of a trumpet. It is a sound from heaven. So whenever you hear or read this word, rushing mighty wind, in relation to the work of God, it's actually pointing out to the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the voice of God. It is the speech that God is speaking. It is what God is saying. It is what God is uttering. The rushing mighty wind. Let me give you a scriptural reference to that. In the book of John chapter 3 verse number 8. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus. He said the wind blows. And you hear it like the sound of a rushing wind. And nobody knows where it goes and where it comes from. So Jesus was talking to Nicodemus saying, when the Spirit of God comes, that is how you hear the sound of God. Let me give you another reference. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 15, when John heard Jesus, the vision that he had, he said, he sounded like the roar of many waters. His feet were like burn, burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. God's voice is like the roar of many waters waters. Throughout the Bible, we see that in New Testament, Jesus told to Nicodemus that his voice, you hear a sound of a wind. And what is that sound of a wind? The Spirit of God blowing. Now, what am I trying to convey? What is this wind blowing? Where do we find answers to all our questions? We find it in the book of Genesis. In Genesis, when God created Adam, God breathed into Adam. When God breathed into Adam, the Bible says, Adam became a living soul. The breath of God. In Hebrew, it is called Ruach. The breath that came out of God. In the similar fashion, in the new covenant, when people were gathered in one accord, the breath of God again blew. The breath of God came on the people and we call it pneuma in Greek, the spirit of God. When the spirit of God came, the people, the disciples became a new creation. The disciples who were gathered together, they became a new creation. 
not after the kind of first adam but after the kind of last adam amen after the kind of last adam now we have the spirit of god the third person of the trinity holy spirit itself is in you if you have made jesus your lord amen when god breathed that sound the sound of the rushing mighty wind that came from heaven so we see whenever god speaks in the old testament they always called it as the wind it says in the book of job god spoke to job through a whirlwind god spoke to ezekiel through a stormy wind god whispered god spoke god spoke it was like the sound of a wind when solomon prayed the rushing mighty wind came and filled the temple amen the rushing mighty wind what is that i told it is the breath of god how did i arrive at that when you see the book of hebrews in contrast with all the other scriptures in relation to that we understand that in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse number 18 it talks about two mountains mountain of sinai and mountain of zion on mountain of sinai god spoke to moses god spoke to his people when people came to hear god it was like the sound of a trumpet show them hebrews 12 the sound of a trumpet it was terrifying this sound was frightening and people begged and said please ask god to stop speaking because god is full of justice when god spoke in the old covenant they were terrified and they said god please stop speaking but when we see the contrast in new testament mount zion thank you jesus for mount zion on mount zion this time when god spoke it was not terrifying it was not trembling people did not say stop speaking they said god i want to hear you more i want to know you more because this time what he spoke he spoke a better word the blood of jesus spoke a better word look at the scripture for yourself hebrews chapter 12 was 18 you have not come to a physical mountain to a place of flaming fire darkness gloom and whirlwind the sound of a wind how god spoke as israelites did at mount sinai for they heard an awesome trumpet blast and a voice so terrible that they begged god to stop speaking they were afraid because man could not face a just god he was too deep in sin he could not see a holy god and they could not come near and even the animals who touch mount sinai they died 3000 people died that day moses came down with the commandments today the location is shifted you and i are seated this morning not on mount sinai we are seated on mount zion on mount zion when you come and touch him nobody dies because god's voice is speaking not crying out for vengeance and vengeance like the blood of abel the blood of jesus is speaking and saying mercy pardon forgiveness and he's saying his blood speaks a better word in our favor amen today when we see on mount zion 3000 people the restoration of god telling you don't have to fear my child anymore to come to me you don't have to fear if you are in sin you don't have to fear if you have disobeyed me what is the solution what is the answer for you to come out of sin for you to come out of wrong doings a patient needs a doctor a sinner needs a savior you cannot run away from him and find solution outside of him you must run to him and you will find solution in him amen now we are on mount zion amen show them the scripture which speaks 
of forgiveness instead of crying out of vengeance like the blood of Abel. Amen. So his blood speaks a better word. So today the voice of God is full of mercy and grace. That is why you are excited to hear his voice this morning. Amen. We all are excited to hear beloved's voice. Amen. Amen. Wake up to beloved's voice. Amen. Don't listen to what is on Mount Sinai. Listen to what is on Mount Zion. Amen. Wake up to Beloved's voice. His voice is full of love. His voice is full of encouragement. His voice is full of hope. His voice is full of forgiveness. His voice is full of grace. And his voice is full of truth. Beloved's voice on Mount Zion. Amen. Give God the glory. Thank you, Jesus. This is the message. This is the gospel that you must hear. Amen. Not everything in this book is the gospel. Because everything that is written for your understanding in, under the inspiration of the, of the Holy Spirit wrote this. Yet you must Know to discern God's word and understand, rightly dividing the word so that you hear beloved's voice and not Satan's voice. Amen. Sometimes the scripture can be misquoted, misinterpreted, misunderstood. Enemy is working behind it to keep you far from God. That is his ultimate motive. When you are far from God, your environment has shifted and now he can devour you easily. So do not run away from God. Amen. So let's come back to the rushing mighty wind. From this we understand it is the voice of God. So God spoke through a whirlwind. God spoke through a stormy wind in the Old Testament that we have seen in the stories of Job and Ezekiel. So when God spoke in the book of Psalms, show them. It says, the, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all of the host of them by the breath of his mouth. How did God create everything that you see around? God created everything by the word of his mouth. So when God spoke, what went out? The breath of God went out. Whenever you speak, what comes out? The wind, air comes out of your mouth. So when God spoke, the breath of God went out. The wind of God went out. Like the sound of many waters. Like the roar of waters. Like sound of rushing mighty wind. Now this breath of God, in Hebrew, it is called ruach. Show them ruach. So ruach is breath. Wind, the spirit of God. This is your strong concordance. When we see that in New Testament, when Jesus told John chapter 6 verse 63, my words are spirit and life. Look at that scripture. My, my words are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. Can you see that spirit and they are life? Now, understand God's Word is spirit and they are life. In Old Testament, God's word is the breath. We, we, we saw that. In the New Testament, it is the same thing. The breath of God, the wind of God, the air that comes out when he speaks. We call it as the spirit of God. In Old Testament, it is ruach. In New Testament, it is pneuma. Show them spirit in Greek. The, the word spirit in Greek is pneuma. What does that mean? The third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-eternal with the Father and the Son, co-equal. So the Spirit of God. So whenever God spoke, let there be light. The Spirit of God went hovering over the waters of the deep. The breath of God, the wind of God left his mouth and began to gather. Are you able to relate? Every time God spoke, his word 
did not return back void amen god's word has power not to return back void heaven and earth will fail not one word written in this book will fail grass withers flower fades but not the word of god it will stand forever because it is the voice of god it is the word of god it is the breath of god it is the ruah of god it is the numa of god it is the third person of the trinity it is god himself you cannot differentiate god and his word because god is his word amen thank you jesus thank you for your word he spoke and everything came into existence and the earth is standing on nothing because his word is upholding amen his word is upholding so throughout the bible we see when god speaks it is like the sound of rushing wind you must understand now where is that rushing wind where is ruach of god where is pneuma of god where is he the third person of the trinity holy spirit is inside of you know ye not you are the temple of living god now the breath of god is in you when you made jesus the lord the breath of god came on you and made you a living soul made you a new creation and now the wind of god the voice of god the spirit of god is living inside of you holy spirit is in you you must believe that now when you open your mouth and speak the spirit of god speaks now what you speak is very important are you able to relate where i am going what you speak is very important let me give you a beautiful illustration from the story of ezekiel chapter 37 in the story of ezekiel chapter 37 god takes ezekiel in a vision and shows him a valley full of dry bones and god asks him son of man can these bones live what did he answer show them ezekiel chapter 37 He asked me, "Son of man, can these bones live?" I said, "Sovereign Lord, you alone know." Then he said to me, "What a wonderful way to answer. <laughs> can these bones live?" He said, "You alone know, sovereign Lord." <laughs> Instead of saying, "I don't know. I don't believe." He said, "You alone know, sovereign Lord." So God said, "Okay. Then prophesy." God said, "Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them dry bones hear the word of the lord prophesy to these bones and say to them what did god say to ezekiel prophesy to these bones and say to them let's go to the next verse what did god say to ezekiel to command Ezekiel 37 9 to 10 also he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man say to the breath thus says the lord god come from the four winds o breath and breathe on this slain and they may live so shall we all read together so i prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them as they lived and stood upon their feet as exceedingly great army very important i prophesied as he commanded what did ezekiel do he prophesied as the lord commanded what did ezekiel do he prophesied as the lord commanded what did ezekiel do he prophesied was what the lord said can i say that basically ezekiel said what god said ezekiel said what god said did ezekiel say anything on top of his mind Did Ezekiel say Ezekiel say anything that he saw around him? Did Ezekiel say what he went by his feelings? Did Ezekiel say what he went by his emotions? Did Ezekiel say 
what he saw he commanded he said what god said amen what is the meaning of prophecy beloved prophecy is when you speak under the divine inspiration of the holy spirit when you study the word prophecy in hebrew it is naba naba means speaking under the divine inspiration of the holy spirit when you speak what holy spirit tells you to speak that's when it is called as true prophecy when you say from top of your mind when you say something out of your feelings it becomes a false prophecy so when you say under the inspiration of the holy ghost it becomes a true prophecy so today go ahead and prophesy over your future prophesy over your children prophesy over anything that is dry and dead see the dry bones and prophesy see the dry things dead things and prophesy prophesy as the lord commanded say what the lord said say the same thing what god said what has god told about you what has god told about your for healing say what god said prophesy to your sick body by his stripes i was healed prophesy to your dead finances by his poverty i have been made rich prophesy over your children the children of righteous are mighty in the land they flourish like palm tree and grow like cedars of lebanon prophesy what god has said about your family prophesy what god has said about your future prophesy my path is getting brighter and brighter don't go by what you feel don't go by what you see don't go by what others say don't go by what the media is trying to portray go by what is written it is written god is with you no weapon formed against you shall prosper it is written god has a great and a glorious future what is written command and say call those things that do not exist as though they do exist are you ready to imitate god because your god's child your god's children don't say what you feel don't say what you see don't speak regret don't speak failure don't speak loss don't speak grief prophesy prophesy under the divine inspiration don't say what you see say what you want to see because holy spirit is inside of you when you speak you know what happens the whirlwind comes out the rushing wind goes out this word of god shall not return back void job 22:28 i shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto me prophesy over your future you decree you go say what you want to see not what you are seeing say what god has said about you in the word decree a thing when you speak the pneuma of god the ruach of god the spirit of god the whirlwind the rushing wind the torrent the tornado the hurricane goes out blows in your favor no force of the enemy can stop that whirlwind no force of the enemy when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of god raises another standard whenever you see any trouble difficulty do not panic do not speak fear do not speak anxiety speak the word of god prophesy as i commanded prophesy as i commanded say the same thing god said say the same thing god said don't go by what you see say the same thing what god said when you say the same thing god said the mighty rushing wind goes and blows and brings everything 
in your favor it can make the dry bones come to life it can make the dead womb come to life it can make dead finances come to life because it is the word of god it shall not return back void so you must know the word of god and speak the word of god my dear friend speak god's word say what god has told about you let's be imitators of god let's speak like our god when he saw darkness he did not say oh there's darkness he said let there be light he called those things that do not exist as though they do exist call those things speak over your job over your business say i am going to be the greatest businessman believe it i am going to be the top employee in my office with a, a, burn, a continuous promotion after promotion nothing is going to stop my growth like joseph i shall rise to top say what god has told about you i am called to be a blessing confess that over you say over your children don't say you will never study you will never do well you are the worst child that i have seen let's not curse our children with our words prophesy under divine inspiration don't say what you see in them today say what you want to see amen god calls them mighty god did not tell david shepherd god told him you are the king of israel god did not call gideon the smallest individual the sm- from the smallest tribe of menessa he said mighty man of valor god calls you not who you are who you will become let's be the imitators of god let's speak like god in our life in the lives of others around us amen speak what god says that's exactly what jesus did jesus came one day to the seashore there were so many boats but he came to the right one <laughs> he came to the boat of peter he never does mistakes there are no accidents <laughs> he's always on time his decisions are always right he came on time to peter's boat and he said peter why don't you cast your net this time peter said jesus i have tried everything my job has failed my marriage has failed my family has failed i'm talking the language of 21st century <laughs> i tried all night i have caught nothing my ministry has failed my people have failed nothing is working in my life jesus i have come to end of myself jesus said that's the best place to be when you come to end of yourself and when you say i cannot do it any more and jesus said peter cast your net down this time he said at your word lord i will cast the net this time at your word what is that word that word is a rushing wind that word is a whirlwind that word is a mighty wind that word is a torrent it's a hurricane it's a tornado it went into the sea and changed the currents and brought all of the fish into peter's net and it was net breaking boat sinking loads of fish into the bosom of peter amen because the word of the lord has left his mouth and the abundance of sea was turned to him amen so today when you take words of jesus you understand he looked at the mountain and he didn't say climb the mountain he didn't say fast for the mountain he didn't say pray for the mountain what did he say he said speak to the mountain amen when he looked at the fig tree he didn't say cut the fig tree he didn't say call the jcb to approve the fig tree he didn't say let's see how many men can push the fig tree he said speak to the fig tree when he saw the wind he did in in the in the sea when sea was disturbed when all the disciples woke him from the sleep he didn't say okay let's come up with a strategy what we can do next how to save the boat sos save our ship <laughs> he said speak 
to the wind the storm amen he spoke and it came to be because every time god speaks the rushing mighty wind the breath of god goes out my dear friend you have that breath that pneuma inside of you what a honor amen ruach is inside of you the breath of god is in you so what you must prophesy as the lord commanded say the same thing what god said about your future amen are you ready to prophesy this morning amen thank you jesus give god the glory daddy god we prophesy we prophesy over this people we prophesy daddy god they shall not be small they shall increase i prophesy over your people their children shall grow up and they shall be mighty they shall be in the top positions top ranks i prophesy over this generation they are a forgiven generation they are a new creation i prophesy over this people daddy god that that they will know the power of your word i prophesy over the this people that he got all the wealth shall come to them wealth of gentiles shall come to them i prophesy over this people that he got all your beloved people there shall be no sickness in the camp because there is no sin in the camp they are washed by the blood of the lamb every pain every infirmity i prophesy you were healed by his stripes receive it this morning receive the healing. healing receive the power receive the pneuma receive the rushing mighty wind that is blowing in your favor amen amen you can be a blessing by partnering with priya abraham ministries to share this good news to partner visit priyaabraham.org/partner This excerpt is brought to you by priyaabraham.org. To get the full message, visit priyaabraham.org.